Hi guys, it's Misha. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'd like to try something a little bit different. I would like to try to do some interactive fiction. Interactive fiction is a text-based game that you play in order to tell a story. And that's the entire point of the game, is to tell the story. This particular one is called Bronze, A Fractured Fairy Tale, by Emily Short. Now, something to keep in mind here is that I'm going to be going very, very slowly because this video is for relaxation and ASMR, and so it might not be the fastest game in the world. However, if you are just here to relax and to listen to a story and to kind of rest for a while and not worry about getting somewhere. If you just want to be here with me, experiencing this piece of interactive fiction with me, then I think this video could work really well for you. I'm going to read the introduction to this game. When the seventh day comes, and it is time for you to return to the castle in the forest, your sisters cling to your sleeves. Don't go back, they say, and when will we ever see you again? But you imagine they will find consolation somewhere. Your father hangs back, silent and moody. He has spent the week as far from you as possible, working until late at night. Now he speaks only to ask whether the beast treated you properly. Since he obviously has his own ideas about what must have taken place over the last few years, you do not reply beyond a shrug. You breathe more easily once you're back in the forest, alone. As you can tell from this introduction, this story takes place within the fairy tale version of Beauty and the Beast. Not quite the Disney one so much. In the original fairy tale, Belle gets to go home to see her family after a while being at the Beast's castle. And so this interactive fiction takes place right in the middle of the story as she's going home from seeing her family. Let's begin. The first thing it asks us, have you played interactive fiction before? I have, but for the sake of my audience, I'm going to say no. Alright, they're going to give us some extra command help that we can turn off at any time. Drawbridge. Even in your short absence, the castle has come to look strange to you again. When you came here first, you stood a long while on the drawbridge, unready to cross the moat, for fear of the spells that might bind you if you did. This time, it is too late to worry about such things. An iron-barred gate leads north. So we've got some options to try. We could look, we could examine some things, we could think about something, or we can type help to get a complete set of instructions. I would like to think about castle. 
you might find out something if you examine the castle. Then again, you might not, but it's worth a try. That sounds like a hint to me. Examine the castle. The prov- <coughs> The pro- <coughs> The drawbridge looks longer than it actually is. The towers are so high that the tops are lost in cloud, and looking east or west you cannot see the furthest extent of the walls. An optical illusion. It is smaller inside, probably. Let's look. There is little enough purpose in loitering outside. He and his servants never come out here. And whatever you must do, you will have to do within. An iron barred gate leads north. I'm going to examine myself. You are non trivially the worse for your journey, hungry, dirty, and tired. But all that can be seen to later. I'm going to examine the moat. The moat is full of slightly oily brown water. If you had been physically imprisoned, you might have tried to swim across, so it is just as well that you were not. Okay, shall we go north? Entrance Hall. There is no fire in the big fireplace, and no one is waiting for you here. The air is very cold. Over the gate, the old familiar warning sign is painted. Various passages lead deeper into the castle, north towards the central courtyard, southwest the guard tower, east and west into the libraries, the offices, the galleries. Somewhere in this maze he waits, and he should be told as soon as possible that you did return. Examine fire. It is unlit, vacant. It is almost as though you are not expected. Examine warning sign. You know the words by heart, having heard them first from your father and then studied them yourself on many more recent occasions. You read, those who seek to leave the castle depart at peril of their lives and souls, unless another servant be provided in exchange, or a fixed term of absence be granted by their master. Examine gate. It stands open and unlocked. We came from the north. Let's go east. We are in the Scarlet Gallery. You do not often come this way, into the older part of the castle, which is narrow and has a low roof. The walls and the ceiling, too, are deep scarlet, the color of the old king and queen that ruled here 250 years ago, when there was still a kingdom. Let's go further east. The Gallery of Historical Paintings. Here on the north wall and the south are paintings of historical events from times past. The assassination of King Elzabad in 1248, the arrival of Princess Lucrezia from the Italian state of Medici Credenza in 1545. The gallery goes on, echoing both east and west. Examine the arrival of Princess Lucrezia. Lucrezia wears silk, the pale blue of the morning sky, and her eyes are little currents of malice. Examine assassination of King Elizabeth. You see his pointy slipper attendants wringing their hands, his wife wiping her eyes on an ermine muff, peasants grieving. 
of Elzebad himself, there was only a pair of blackened feet sticking out from under the elephant. Wow, well, there's a whole story there. We may never know it. I don't know. Let's go further east. Room with the labyrinth floor. A mosaic floor of black and white, like that of cathedrals, as protection against the spite of the undead, which protection might have often been needed by those that dwelt here in former times. The way down is at the center of the maze. Let's examine the mosaic floor. The maze doesn't look uncrossable by you. You step forward and look down into the room below, but it is too dark to see much. So if we go down... Though a dim light filters down from the room with the labyrinth floor, you can see almost nothing of the contents of your current location. I bet we need a light. Let's see, we can... Okay, we can go down or west. We already went down, so we've got to go back where we came from. West. Gallery of Historical Paintings. West. Scarlet Gallery. From here we can go northeast or southeast. Why don't we go northeast? Treasure Room. Locked in an iron cage are the house treasures not in use. The collection consists of a scepter, a puzzle piece, and a pair of cloven shoes at present. He showed them to you one rainy day, telling you their many histories. Nearby, a small door leads east. Let's examine the scepter. Formerly belonging to Queen Ingratitude and the first, so he said, only slightly bent where she used it to strike Kim, King Kofitua. You reacquaint yourself with its appearance, studded with measly turquoises and semi-precious stones. Examine puzzle piece. Something shiny has been painted on the piece. That's all we know about it. Examine shoes. The shoes were made for something with cloven hooves. They bear evidence of having been adjusted to their current size by a shoemaker, and perhaps, therefore, could be again. Examine the cage. Made of broad, strap-like bars of metal, as thick as a man's belt and heavily reinforced, here and there are marks where someone would, have, would seem to have made an attempt to break in. In the cage are the scepter, the puzzle piece, and the pair of cloven shoes, which we looked at already. Let's examine the door that leads east. It is closed and locked. Might as well try it. Unlock door. You lack a key that fits the small door. Well, that makes sense. Let's go back southwest again. And this time, let, and we are in the Scarlet Gallery. This time, let's go southeast. Scarlet Tower. A little hexagonal room from whose narrow window you can see the moat, the lawn, and the beginning of the forest outside. On the windowsill, a helmet waits for use of the sentry. He's not down here, then. In the west, in the east wing, there is still the chance that he's somewhere in the kitchen wing, west of the entrance hall. Maybe he got hungry. He never liked to eat in the dining hall alone, and took it up only when you were around. But maybe he's gone there for some reason anyway. Let's 
examine the helmet. A very old helmet that you have seen the beast wear, and quite foolish it looked, perched on a head it no longer fits. It would suit your head better. He told you once that the helmet was for night watchmen, scouts, and guards, to increase their vigilance and strengthen their hearing. Lines of writing arc over each ear, but you do not know the language in question. Examine window. It gives a view of the forest beyond, the way you came from, in fact. have an inventory I can access with I. And I'm just carrying a helmet. Okay. Let's go back northwest to the Scarlet Gallery. West again to the entrance hall. And let's go west again. The Great Dining Hall. Such a long haul that the soup might get cold between one end and the other. You and he used only the far west end, nearest the kitchen. Once you took to dining together at all, that is. The first few months he brought trays to your room while you hid. But then you took to eating here, and at the end of every meal he would stand up formally and ask his question. You can leave at any time, he said when he first spoke to you. You stared at him, surprised that someone with his face and teeth was capable of human communication. Would you like to go? There are other memories, more recent, of course. Every glance around the room reminds you of a different one. Our exits are east, west, or north. We're heading west, so let's continue going west. Enormous Kitchen Haunted with the spirits of chefs past, generations and generations of culinary geniuses, one can never predict its whimsies. Unless he has moved everything, the bell to summon them into action should be in one of the rooms upstairs. There are actually spirits that you can summon with a bell, and we need the bell. Cool. Okay, let's go. We can't go further west. Let's go north. Servant quarters. You've never come here before, and now you see why. Not a room friendly to visitors. It has the air of resentful, martyred suffering. Even his most unpleasant ancestors would not have grudged this place more paint, surely, and more straw for the beds. A decaying ladder leads down. Alright, let's go down. Though a dim light filters down from the servants' quarters, you can see almost nothing of the contents of your current location. You find yourself concentrating all the more alertly on your hearing as though the slightest echo might offer a clue. You hear some dry sifting from the northeast. Uh, I don't think we can see very well, but let's try going northeast anyway. It's so dark in here that you have to feel your way along, and are nervous of tripping at any moment. You find yourself concentrating all the more alertly on your hearing, as though the slightest echo might offer a clue. You hear some dry sifting from the immediate vicinity. It says here that we can go dust. But it doesn't work. these helpers at the bottom are. In fact, I think I might turn them off. Office mode off.
we can use think about to get us out of specific puzzles. What if we think about dust? Ah, it wants us to examine the dust. Ah, but it's too dark. We can't see anything. Alright, we came from the north... Or no, we went northeast, so now we're going to go southwest. And we're going to go back up to the servants' quarters. And we're going to go... Or was it south? To the kitchen. Uh, let's go back east. And let's go north from the great dining hall. You find your way blocked by a phantom guard. Somewhere nearby, you, head, you hear chimes. As soon as you back up, he disperses into smoke again. So, the beast in his castle has all these spirit ghostly guards and servants. Cool. Oh, here we go. I missed a spot. You allow yourself to remember another night, another request. I'm surprised you haven't gone home yet, he said very early in your stay. I've heard stories, you replied, as if there weren't enough to see around the castle. I know what happens to your servants who try to leave you. Nothing bad would happen to you, he said, but you could not believe him. Not with all the captured spirits, not with the stories, not with the evidence around the castle. Hmm. Alright, let's go east. To the entrance hall. From here, I want to go north, towards the central courtyard. Central courtyard. Open to a gray sky from which a light rain falls. You have never seen the courtyard otherwise. It rains in every season, winter or summer, no matter what lies beyond the moat. It was here that you first laid eyes on the beast, emerging from the state rooms, snarling. He seemed angry at you for coming, even though you had had no choice. Or perhaps, you thought, he was simply violent. You did not run. The castle proper opens both north and south, and to the east a helical staircase ascends to the roof. Wow, let's take the scary staircase. The steps rise from here towards the upper rooms and open out onto the bare courtyard. An obscene gargoyle sits where the final, where the finial of the banister should be. Obscene? Why is it obscene? Oh, gargoyle. He came up while you were bent over the gargoyle, trying to lift it. Taking that back to your room, he asked slyly. It won't work, but if you're lacking companionship, I could find an appropriate servant to see to your needs. You felt yourself blush. It's ugly, you said. I wanted to move it. Oh, you can't. He frowned at it. It is a remnant left here by an angry soul who managed to take some revenge despite his enslavement. There are a few others around, mostly in the crypt. They're immovable, but harmless. You reacquaint yourself with its appearance. Not too large, but stunningly ugly. A stone about the size of an apple, carved into a monster with outsized ears and eyes, not to mention the outsized attributes elsewhere. What a graceful way of describing such a statue. Either go back to the 
courtyard or go up. Of course we're going up. In this spot you fell and almost broke your leg, or some other more valuable part of you, except that he caught you. But you are alone now, and therefore cautious. Doesn't seem to be anything up here. Oh, we can go east, though. The, I examined the stairs, and it says too narrow for comfort near the axis, too broad for speed along the outer edge, and at the center, where they have just the right breadth, they have been worn down by the passage of hundreds of feet and made almost into a ramp. Let's go east. We are in a private parlor. A sitting room of the family in old times, and familiar territory to you now as well. Your bedroom is just south, other bedrooms mostly smaller in other directions. Nearby a heavy door leads north. You can also see a bent wood table on which a jigsaw puzzle is here. We have seen a puzzle piece earlier in that treasure room, and now here's a puzzle. Let's examine the puzzle. His latest offering. He brings you all the most innocent toys he can find to occupy your time and make you less miserable. This one is nearly finished, missing only one piece that neither of you could ever find. Well, I found it quickly. What is the puzzle of? Mm, it doesn't tell. Well, let's go to my bedroom, shall we? <laughs> Crystal bedroom. A fantasia of gleaming and glittering, chandeliers and mirrors. All that shines or reflects has been moved here into this room that you inhabit, which he never enters. The south end of the room is most dazzling because of the daylight from the balcony. A ridiculous filigree balcony that is like nothing so much as a birdcage, and from here you can see all the way across the moat, across the forest, the plain to the edge of the sea, only by staring long enough in any direction. When you first came here, the balcony was full of plants in pots, poison oak, nettles, nightshade, tatara. They grow best here, he explained. Don't touch them. And he took them away, and you have never seen them again since. Alright, let's go back north into the room. And north again into the parlor. Let's go... Southeast. That should take us to the smaller room. Empty bedroom. Like a monk's chamber compared to every other part of the palace, just bare walls now. Here your father stayed when he made his ill-fated journey to the castle. The beast told you this on your first visit. On the wall, as a curio, hangs an open shackle, sign of the only person ever to have escaped the power of this place. Salmon Shackle. Your father claims to have been chained up, but the beast never made the least effort to restrain you with chains or bars. On the contrary, but that remains a puzzle. You reacquaint yourself with its appearance. A curious object, a broken shackle. Nowhere else in the castle are there any chains or ropes or devices of torture. There has never been a need for such physical coercion. I acquire the shackle. Alright, so I've got this shackle and this helmet. Why don't we wear the helmet to see what happens? 
You settle the helmet over your head, and there is a roaring in your ears at first. But then the sharpened hearing begins to feel natural again. So this helmet seems to increase our sense of hearing. It's interesting. Maybe we could go back eventually to that servant's quarters, because he kept talking about how my hearing was sharpened, and we could sharpen it, in, sharpen it even more with this helmet. Okay, let's take off the helmet for now. You lift the helmet from your head, and the sudden quiet feels like going deaf. Alright, let's go northwest. Let's try going southwest this time. Green bedroom. Having more personality than most of the bedrooms, it was decorated for someone specific and has been left that way green and white, with a simple rustic cast unusual for the palace. The chief exception is the royal portrait on the wall. Examine the portrait. That was me, he told you, before I changed. Do you think I was handsome? You shrugged. Handsome, yes, but proud, selfish, resentful, perhaps cruel. The painter did not do justice to your personality, you replied. You're wrong, he said, and I put the painting here to punish the woman who slept here. She treated me with justice, and I could not forgive her. He refused to tell you the rest. You like me more than you should, and trust me less, he said. If I told you the rest of the particular story, you would never trust nor like. There. That's a warning for you. You reacquaint yourself with its appearance. A portrait of a young, arrogant king. Not a prince, but one who inherited early and used his power from the beginning. He stares out with bitterness, perhaps even resentment. He has a shadowy past. Back to the parlor. Go east. Guest bedroom. Made up for the reception of a guest who will never arrive again. A tapestry recalls the story. Still here at the center of the room is the stool you and Beast used the time he tried to teach you to dance. Not a great success, but more effective than the experiment with stilts. He's not upstairs then. There's nowhere in these rooms he could have been hiding, no space large enough to conceal him. Perhaps he's in one of the side rooms you've not visited yet. I, I want to find him, but let's look at this tapestry. It is hard to make out the story from the faded threads, but it appears to show a very small man, almost a dwarf, who holds on a leading string a very large demon almost a god. Hmm. Examine the stool. An ordinary three-legged stool, like the one your cat at home liked to sleep on. Alright, let's go west. And we'll take the one door we haven't tried, which is the heavy door that leads north. You get far enough to glimpse an open, heavy door before being overcome. You reel back from a smell of roses and death, so powerful that you can't go forward. Until there's a breeze through here, you won't be able to stand being in the place. And so we go back to the private parlor. Roses and death. That must be an interesting combination of smells. All right, everyone, I think that's probably good for my first attempt at this game. I hope you enjoyed it, and let me know if you liked it, and if you did, I will continue the series and go through the rest of the game. 
Thanks for joining me, everyone.